Hello everyone, I am Dr. Lahari here and uh, welcome to the part 2 of General Principles of Radiographic Interpretation. In this chapter, uh, I have tried to give you some solved examples to understand the uh, principle behind radiographic interpretation. The learning outcomes would be to understand a step-by-step -step analytic process that can be applied to interpretation of radiographic images. In this um, lecture topic, I have attached two examples of uh, uh, cases that I have solved for you. One is a maxillary radiograph and the other is a mandibular radiograph, both in the molar region. Uh, you could find more similar examples on the uh, PIDC YouTube uh, for uh, an understanding, for better understanding of this uh, topic. I have followed the simple radiographic interpretation format that we use regularly um, in the clinic for your um, ease of understanding. Uh, hello everyone, this is Dr. Lahari and uh, welcome back to Radiographic Interpretation Made Easy. Uh, this is case 6. The only difference with this case is that we'll be discussing it, I will be discussing it alone and uh, <clears throat> you can give me your feedback about it uh, after you've seen this. So, uh, like any radiographic interpretation, the steps in uh, interpreting a intraoral periapical radiograph would be first of all to analyze uh, the um, radiograph taken what are the normal anatomical landmarks uh, if there are any radiographic falls what type of falls do we see then we come down to which are the teeth present and the uh, teeth of interest <coughs> next uh, for each tooth of interest it's important to again discuss the crown root height of alveolar crest periodontal ligament space lamina dura alveolar bone proper radiographic diagnosis <clears throat> and of course add a note on differential diagnosis wherever applicable let's look at this radiograph here <clears throat> so first of all we need to analyze uh, that it is an intraoral periapical radiograph and uh, um, from the appearance it looks like it is the second quadrant so what are the normal anatomical landmarks seen right so here we see that there's a yellow line which is your zygomatic arch right next we see the purple line which is the floor of maxillary sinus next you see another shadow that's here in uh, the posterior part of this uh, maxillary radiograph which in fact doesn't really belong to the maxilla it is the coronoid process of the mandible that is visible on uh, most posterior parts of most of the maxillary molar uh, radiographs next we move on to identifying the faults in this particular radiograph I don't really see many faults except for a few scratch marks here uh, otherwise it looks uh, good enough not many faults the uh, teeth look uh, in well proportion <clears throat> and the teeth of interest are uh, 2 4 2 5 2 6 and 2 7 right so that's 2 4 for you that's 2 5 which is second premolar first molar and second molar moving on so we have identified that our tooth of interest here is 2 4 and why because we see that there is a nice uh, radiolucency that you're seeing in the crown here right so uh, this radiolucency if you observe closely is actually the is arising from the distal part of the crown and is extending to involve the enamel as well as the dentine right so moving on you will see that is actually involving the pulp of the tooth all right so you have a um, this radiolucency most likely looks like dental caries okay the, the radiolucency looks very similar to that of dental caries and uh, which is involving the pulp of the tooth so that, that's what we have here a well-defined radiolucency involving enamel dentine and the pulp right so 
okay moving on to the height of alveolar crest right so generally the height of the alveolar crest is the yellow line that you can see right so in this radiograph you will be surprised that you see two yellow lines why is because there there is a considerable amount of radiolucency in comparison to the other side which appears normal right so this gives us an impression of what we call as bone loss now how do we measure the height of alveolar crest this is how you measure it so if this were the CEJ of the crown and if a normal root of a uh, first premolar is about 14 mm around 14 mm then it is important for us to estimate the amount of bone loss that we are seeing right so this amount of bone loss would be roughly around 5 mm of bone loss so in case you have had radiographic faults where you are having foreshortening or elongation obviously this uh, bone loss also the would not be accurate so we would name this as horizontal bone loss up to 5 mm below CEJ. Next is uh, important to identify the periodontal ligament space. Right? So when you're looking at the periodontal ligament space, you will see that you can see a black line all along the tooth which is uh, demarcated by this yellow line here. Right? So in this radiograph you can see that the apex of the tooth you cannot see this yellow line anymore right so this is the area where you're having widened periapical uh, uh, periodontal ligament space as well as a loss in the lamina dura in this area so lamina dura is the white line and periodontal ligament space is the black space between the white line and the uh, cementum of the tooth or the tooth root right so if you look closer these are the normal trabecular uh, appearances seen at pattern of trabeculae at the uh, maxillary premolar uh, apex region and hence in this radiograph the alveolar bone proper appears relatively normal moving on since we've seen that there is widening of pdl space there is loss of lamina dura at the apex and there is a very well defined radiolucency which is dental caries involving the pulp they all correlate and your radiographic diagnosis is now deep carry two four which is tooth number always better to start with the tooth number tooth number deep dental caries with chronic periapical um, apical periodontitis tooth number finding followed by the diagnosis good day everyone let us look at uh, uh, radiographic interpretation made easy case 9 I am Dr. Lahari Thelang from Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology the steps in radiographic interpretation like always are radiograph taken, uh, normal anatomical landmarks, radiographic faults, tooth or teeth of interest, crown, root, height of alveolar crest, periodontal ligament space, lamina dura, alveolar bone proper, radiographic diagnosis and finally radiographic differential diagnosis all of which should help us arrive at the treatment plan that is required. So the radiograph that we're discussing uh, now is for the fourth quadrant. It's an intraoral periapical radiograph and the teeth seen here are 4445, um, 4647 four, four, and 48 which we can only see partially. So this is a reasonably well taken radiograph and I don't really see many faults in this. So I have written nil in the section of radiographic faults. The anatomical landmarks that we can see here are the mandibular canal or the inferior alveolar canal where you can see it in uh, the dotted uh, yellow line. Then you can see the mental foramen in the previous case I had discussed that generally the mental foramen is a faint uh, uh, oval shaped uh, radiolucency seen somewhere between the roots of the premolars. So here it is located there you can only see part of the mental uh, foramen in this particular radiograph. So it's not necessary that you see it in every mandibular molar radiograph, but generally you will be able to find it. Uh, next is the step ladder pattern of trabeculation seen in the mandibular molar region. 
and the green arrow marks point out towards the cervical uh, burnout that is something which is very peculiar uh, and seen at the cervical regions and can be often confused for a, ray, uh, a caries but it's very important to notice that the enamel would be intact and uh, uh, the dentine would be intact and hence this is only a radiographic uh, uh, illusion or an optical illusion which is uh, seen because of attenuation of the beam in those areas moving on we have uh, teeth of interest that is four six and four seven and what do we see in these particular teeth so let's look at uh, four six first four six there is a well-defined radiolucency extending from the occlusal part of the crown involving enamel dentine and the pulp and this is suggestive of a deep dental caries right so in four seven if you see that there is a small distal cervical uh, caries seen here also involving enamel and dentine but at a safe distance from the pulp of the tooth for it is only partially visible and you notice that it is impacted so that's the caries for you outlined um, in both uh, the uh, root of uh, interest in our tooth fin rest is the four six we will see that the mandibular roots there are two roots and both the roots appear normal you can see the entire outline of the roots here uh, but definitely there is something below the roots which we need to uh, look into right and that brings us to the periodontal ligament space and lamina dura <coughs> which is very important to note in teeth which have large caries involving the pulp so uh, in this case you see that there is a widening of pdl in both the roots uh, from the middle third towards the apical third and gets very little fuzzy here you can't make, make out and and appears widened in both the roots uh, same with the lamina dura it is thickened in the cervical as well as uh, middle third of both the roots and lost completely at the apex of uh, both the roots you can't make out the lamina dura anymore you can only observe it very thickened uh, on the uh, cervical and the uh, middle aspect of the root so uh, that is what i am trying to bring your attention to moving on the alveolar bone proper now that is where the most important uh, uh, area of interest is is within the bone here in this radiograph you're seeing a mixed radio opaque radiolucent appearance involving both the roots is quite well defined in terms of uh, radiolucency but towards the periphery it becomes very fuzzy mixed and blending into a more radio opaque uh, appearance of the bone again suggestive of uh, inflammatory bone response and the entire size of the lesion would be around 1 cm or a little more than 1 cm so the yellow arrow marks point out to the more radiolucent part of the lesion and the blue arrow marks point out to the more radio opaque part of the lesion that's why i've termed it as mixed radiolucent and radio opaque appearance in the alveolar bone proper of this tooth now if you were to summarize the findings you have 4 6 which has deep caries right and 4 7 only has a small caries involving enamel and dentine whereas this 4 6 has a deep caries and then it is involving pulp there is a widening of pdl and thickening of lamina dura and loss of pdl and lamina dura at the apex with a mixed radiolucent radio opaque appearance which gives us to an understanding that there is 4 6 deep caries with rarefying ostitis and the differential diagnosis could be an osseous or a cemento osseous or a cemental dysplasia generally in the mixed phase also called as a second stage of the disease and an osteomyelitis which appears um, mixed radio opaque and radiolucent right so that brings us to the end of uh, the radiographic interpretation of this particular uh, uh, radiograph uh, thank you for listening and for any comments, feedback and queries, please send me an email. Thank you.